welcome to Maison Journals. It's been a few months since I've done an update, um, simply because there was not much going on at the house other than some plastering, and I'll update you with some pictures on that later. Just to recap, I bought the house in France in 2021, and it's been having refurbishments for the past couple of years. The time has finally come to move over there permanently. So I'm leaving East London for a central French countryside. Um, I left my job, which was incredibly difficult uh, three weeks ago. Um, I work with a lot of people that you get attached to, and that was really, really difficult to do, um, but all part of the process. Um, this is week three of not working, and yesterday was the first day that I actually thought to myself, how did I find time to go to work? This process is, although it's something I want to do, it's not going to be about its challenges. I've lived in London all of my life with everything on my doorstep. I know where to go if ever I need anything. Um, but we are quite remote where we're moving to. So I'm very aware that this will have challenges. I have been reading Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Joe Dispenza. I've read it several times. The title explains what it's all about, but I found it incredibly useful just to prepare myself for the challenges. Another thing that I have done to try and prepare is I was really conscious to move in the, the warmer months. You know, we're just coming out of the spring, um, early summer, because it will just be a lot easier to adapt to the environment, I believe, in the summer months. So I've got about 12 days to go before the movers come. This is the last room that I need to pack up. Um, I'm hoping that everything's gonna fit into the lorry, but I'm not sure. Uh, so I've got a small update covering car, what I'm going to do with the animals. Um, I hope you enjoy it and I'll update next week. And thank you for watching. So as previously mentioned, uh, the, the refurbishments have been gone on for two years, um, not done by myself. Uh, we've had builders uh, doing the work while in London, um, earning the money to pay for the builders. The final bit of work has been the plaster in and that has been going on since January. They finally finished and I've just got some pictures of that. The plasterer has been an absolute superstar. He's plastered 19 rooms and they're all ready to paint. So it's my first day of not working. I feel very disorientated, um, but I'm sure it'll get better. And the first job on the list is I need a visa. So I'm going off to TLS in Putney to apply for my visa for one year. I just hope I get it. Otherwise, I'll be looking for another job in the UK. So we got the tube to Putney and spent the whole day at TLS. And then we just had to wait. It was very stressful, but we waited for 14 days. Passport has arrived. We've been waiting for this for 14 days. We went to TLS for our interview. We hope that we've got a visa for a year, but we're going to open it and find out. We got a year. <laughs> whilst being off work it's given me the opportunity to uh, spend some time with friends which you don't get time to do when you're working full time um, so I had a lovely trip down the River Thames something that I've lived it all my life and have never done and I really enjoyed it with one of my oldest friends of 50 years so we started off on the south side of the river. This is the Cutty Sark. You can actually go inside and have a walk around. Beautiful carousel, although we didn't go on it. And this is the entrance to the foot tunnel, which goes from the south side of the river to the east side of the river. This was built in 1902, and it's the actual foot tunnel under the river. And you can just see here um, the direction in which it goes in. And then for £9.50, we took a 20-minute river boat cruise up the Thames. As I said, I've never done this. That's the shard to the left and the tower, tower bridge. But it was really beautiful. The sun was shining. Everyone on the boat was in a really good mood and everyone was cheering as we went under Tower Bridge, um, clapping and cheering. It was really a special day and just over to the right there, that's um, the Tower of London, which we would have liked to have gone in, but we just didn't have time. A really beautiful day and I highly 
recommend this. Um, and as I said, I think it's nine pounds one way, and you can actually get um, the the boat back for twelve pounds. And then we ended in Westminster Bridge. I do plan before I go to visit Pollock Toy Museum. It is on my list, but I don't have long, so I will try and get there. Good morning. I'm currently at the garage, the BMW garage. Um, it's I've debated for many, many months, should I take my car to France or should I buy a car in France? Ideally, I need a four wheel drive because the terrain warrants a four wheel drive. So I decided, yes, I'm going to do that. However, you need to have owned the car in the UK for six months. Otherwise, you will have to pay import tax. And being that I'm going in two weeks, I haven't got time for that. So I'm going to have to spend £1,500 on just changing the BMW headlights to European. Um, not happy about that, but it is what it is. Um, I did go down the reflector on the headlight route, but apparently that's only uh, okay if you are a tourist and uh, but if your intent is to be and live in France they have to be swapped over for um, the European headlights it won't get past the French MOT I forgot what it's called uh, with reflectors so they do have to be changed over if my car was a year younger they would have there would have been a switch on the dashboard and it wouldn't have been a problem however it's not so I'm going to leave the car here today and they're going to swap the, the headlights over. I will keep the UK headlights in case something goes badly wrong and we have to come back. Um, and then I'm going to start the process once I'm in France of swapping it over to a French number plate because again I'm told that my UK car insurance, although it allows me to drive in Europe for up to I think it's 90 days, if your intent is to live in France they won't pay out and in the event of having an accident it's just too risky and it's illegal so today I'm starting the process of transferring my car over uh, to a French number plate and putting the headlights on is part of that process um, that costs a £1,500 so um, that's where we are today I'll update later so 10 minutes later I'm back in the car and it's not good news the garage have not ordered the headlights the European headlights they come from Germany and they can order them it's their fault they forgot they can order them but it's going to take up to 10 working days for them to be delivered and I've only got eight working days left in the UK so I'm not going to be able to do that in the UK um that's it is what it is um it's a mistake and things happen so no headlights today but the garage is on an industrial estate where there is a home bargains now home bargains sell lots of things that you don't know you need toot um but i did manage to get these i got 10 of these they're bird feeders because we don't have a lot of birds at the house at the moment simply because no one's been feeding them and stuff so I've got 10 of those to hang from the trees that's lovely and um, there's also quite a lot of feral cats and it's it's kitten season so I bought loads of these kitten milk so the car's not done that's another thing that we'll have to do when we're in France but that's fine but I did get my bird feeders and kitten milk Today is a day for packing, but I'm finding it rather challenging wandering from room to room and not really um, achieving much. I do collect some odd things and um, I'm finding it quite challenging to get order, but um, I'll have a cup of tea and continue. I have got two dogs, border terriers, and they are coming with me. One is 17 and he's going to find the journey incredibly challenging just to get her to the vet. It, it, she gets really stressed out. She doesn't like the car journey. Um, so that's Minnie. She's 17, Border Terrier. She does not have a passport. I've also got Arthur, who's a Border Terrier. He does have a passport, so he's fine. He won't need the AHC, but Minnie will need the AHC. But today I'm taking them to the vet to try and get them some medication to calm them down for the 10 hour car journey. Um, last time I took Arthur on his French passport, uh, after the 10 hours, he got out of the car completely dehydrated, collapsed and spent uh, over a day in the French vet. So I really want to avoid that happening again. So I need to get him something to calm him down. 
So I'm going to see what the vet's got to say and whether they can help me. So at the vet, Arthur is not looking impressed at all, but very calm. And waiting for his turn in the queue. Minnie is just as unimpressed as Arthur. So back from the vet and they have been, that was really, really helpful. And they've given both of the dogs um, some gabapentin and an additional drug to, to give together um, for the journey uh, to try and calm them down. They did advise, they've given me two doses for each dog to try it a day before, a week, sorry, a week before you go, just in case they have an adverse reaction. You don't want them having that in the car. At least if they have the reaction here, I can get them straight to the vet. So I'm going to try that tomorrow because I have got a day at home and see how that goes. And then Minnie, who doesn't have a passport, is going back next week to get all the paperwork done for her AHC. Um, so let's see how the medication goes. So it's eight hours after Minnie had her medication and she's fine, very sleepy. And Arthur is also very sleepy and not interested in chicken. Mm -hmm.